Slight mark. Doom. Big button. Send start semester. Lock the pitch. Greetings, Internet Scholars. This is your Jesse Styles. Welcome to Twisted Signals. This is a creative coding course at Carnegie Mellon University with a focus on signal processing. So in addition to learning how to get strong at creative coding technique, we are going to be looking at some of the underlying principles of how computers represent information and manipulate it to do cool slash maybe useful stuff. I am speaking to you now in front of a galaxy of audio reactive ducks. So let's look at that. This is uh, a quick patch that I made in the coding environment that we will be using this semester, Max also known as Max MSP Jitter. Max is a graphical programming environment that is very widely used in the worlds of experimental and electronic music, as well as electronic and interactive art. This patch is actually fairly simple in terms of the amount of code that's here. It's not like a huge patch, but what it's doing in terms of signal processing is kind of sophisticated. So the goal of the course is that we would be able to make things like this and also to explain how they're actually working on a signal level. And the idea here is if you can explain it on a signal level, you could execute something like this in almost any coding environment because you'd understand the principles of what's going on underneath the code. So just looking at what we're doing here, uh, this is based on analysis of audio, and then we're doing some visualization of that audio analysis. You can see in the, this part of the patch right here, there's a graph, and this is a graph of the amount of energy in the audio signal across the spectrum of human hearing. So if I made a hissing sound, you'll see a kind of broadband response in the graph. So I'm using the microphone right now to do this audio analysis in real time. I've added a few other audio sources to this patch here. I can turn down the microphone, and this is a little generative music thing. If you want to see how this works, you can just double click into this uh, and there's a sub patcher and this is a, I don't know, a kind of primitive generative music patch. And there's some things you could play with. There's the tempo. You could play with this synthesizer or with this drum machine. Yeah, uh, okay, I also added a third audio source here. If you wanna do some precision duck control, we've got a sine wave generator and you can generate really specific frequencies using this number box. So let's just, yeah, that note right there corresponds to this duck. So you, you can see the spike in the spectrum right here. So 
all of these different frequency bins are sort of attached to individual ducts. And if we could find the frequency of any specific duct, we could make that duct get big. You could also just change the volume of your audio signal and you'd be scaling the entire spectrum according to that. So that's really useful, don't you think? Um, all of the patches that I'm demonstrating in these videos are available on Google Drive. So you can follow the link in the description to this video, or if you're enrolled in the course, you can go to the root level of the Google directory where you'll find all the patches in one place. Again, this patch is, I would say, kind of sophisticated, but you can feel free to open it up and start playing around with it. And at the end of the semester, uh, ideally, it should totally make sense. Do I want to save this? Sure. Okay, while I have your attention, let's just look at some basic concepts that we're going to be exploring in this course. Starting with some definitions. So uh, what is a signal? A signal is a fluctuating quantity that represents information. For example, uh, here we see a temperature signal. This might be a body of water that changes temperature over time so that it's warmer in the summer and colder in the winter. So in this graph of the signal, we have two variables. We have an independent and a dependent variable. The temperature on the y-axis depends on what time it is on the x-axis. So time is independent in this. Another type of signal we're going to be working with a lot this semester are audio signals. These correspond to sound in the real world. So for example, a guitar can produce sound. When you make the strings vibrate, the strings displace air and create this pressure wave that creates the experience of sound. And the way we might represent that as a signal would be like this. This is a very standard representation of an audio signal, where again, we have time on the x-axis and in this case, on the y-axis, our dependent variable is amplitude. And that amplitude refers to the pressure level of that sound. Another type of signal we're going to be messing with quite a bit is images. In images, we have two independent variables. We have width and height shown here as the x and y axis and our dependent variable in this signal is color so the color value of the image depends on where we are in terms of the x and y position inside of this array when we're working with video signals the color value has a third independent variable which is time so color depends on x y and time. Signal processing in general is the process through which we manipulate signals so as to change their characteristics or to extract information. This is a traditional block diagram of a signal processing system where you have an input X and an output Y. In brackets, we have our independent variable. So maybe this is time. So we say x at n, so at some moment in time, goes through our signal processing system, which is this big h, and that gives us the output y of n. We could represent this signal processing system with a difference equation. So this would be the explicit mathematical formula that gives us the output y. Bonus points, if you know what this formula is, leave a comment in the video. Signal processing uh, is what makes the world go around. It's what makes your phone calls work. It's what keeps airplanes in the sky. And it's what makes electric guitars sound cool. You can't just plug your guitar into the amplifier. You want to run it through a signal processor 
um, so that it sounds more dope. And uh, maybe you'd run it through several signal processors and then it would be in a series of things that make them hopefully more dope. Of course, we can also process video signals. This is uh, some iconic work by Nam June Pike, a Korean American video artist who is known as the progenitor of the field of video art. Nam June Pike, when he was doing his early work, was working entirely with analog video systems, which um, has a really cool look and feel. So synthesizing and manipulating video signals with no computers, all analog circuitry, and it gives you this awesome, groovy, hazy, analog feel. And uh, as the technology evolved over the course of Nam June's Pike's career, he also began to explore with computer signal processing and computer image generation. Okay. Thank you for joining me on this inaugural journey into the world of Twisted Signals. I'll see you next time.